The Great Game, How Do the Globalists, the New World Order, the Anglo-American Establishment, plan on playing the different countries of the world and populations off against each other to bring in this world government that they've openly announced. Bank of the World controlling everything you do, uh, the green Nazis in your home, mainstream news, the young people's new jobs will be converted over to being brigades. Uh, they're saying the public school children will grow gardens to, to give it to the state. That's the new service is actual slavery. I mean, we're going back to pre uh, 1860s here. Going back to Webster Tarpley in a moment to continue with Iran, then North Korea, as we go around the world and look at what's really happening. And then we'll look at the economy uh, as well with our guest, who has a great track record of analyzing and breaking all this down in extremely uh, accurate fashion. Before I go any further, though, I'll tell you about a few of the sponsors that make this radio show possible. One of them is Home Game. This is a place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, or getting any real estate questions answered, and it's absolutely free. It's H-O-M-E-G-A-I-N dot com, homegain dot com, and see what I'm talking about. All you need to do is type in your home address, and you will get a free estimate of your home value, or any other address for that matter. If you're buying or selling a home, according to Realtors Home Sellers, becoming more realistic on home prices, uh, go to blog.homegain.com and see Home Gain Home Prices Survey Results. There is a new feature called Street View where you can look at the house at street level and take a virtual walkthrough tour of the neighborhood you're interested in. You've got to see it for yourself, and again, it's all free. There are tons of tools to help you, for instance, and if you want to remodel your home, go to homegain.com. Use their home sale maximizer to help you determine which home improvements can most increase your home's value before you put it on the market. It's homegain.com. And one other sponsor I wanted to tell you about this hour is eFoodsDirect.com. This is the place to get high-quality, storable foods for insurance. You know, you buy insurance for floods and insurance for hurricanes or tornadoes or storms or fire. But in this depression we're going into, in this urban society with almost no one being self-sufficient, no one having really gardens unless it's a slave garden with your children working with the federal government, we need to have storable food. And this is who I get my storable food from. They were I was buying food for them before they were a sponsor. eFoodsDirect.com, the letter E, FoodsDirect.com, eFoodsDirect.com, or 1-800-409-5633. That's 1-800-409-5633 or eFoodsDirect.com. Call and get a free brochure or watch the videos online about all their high-quality food products. And they have other things like stoves and water filters and stuff. It's just a great site, eFoodsDirect.com, or 800-409-5633. And then lastly, we have an online video and bookstore shopping cart. It's a video store, a bookstore, all the best films and books that I read that I think are important, the best films I see. It's all available at Infowars.com. We've had a lot of T-shirts that spread the word about the New World Order and fighting the globalist. If you want to meet like-minded people, uh, if you want to uh, you know, reach out to folks in your community, uh, well, then wear your colors on your sleeve, uh, on your back, Infowars.com, just a whole bunch of anti-New World Order, pro-1776, anti-slavery material, and, of course, all of the films like Endgame and uh, Ma'afa, 21, Black Genocide in the 21st Century America. I want to go over some eugenics and this whole green movement with Webster as well before he leaves us. Now, going back to Webster Griffin Tarpley. Uh, Webster, okay, you got the floor. I'm going to sit back here, continue with the different players in Iran, where you see this going, how that's going, and then let's move to other battlefronts, like what you see really going on in Pakistan uh, versus what's happening in North Korea, because it's as if someone flipped a light switch in global crises in a fiery crescent from Eastern Europe into uh, the Korean Peninsula just suddenly lit up in flames, as well as Africa. Yes, well, uh, just on Iran now, uh, if, you, if you come out and say that the revolution in Iran is being run through Twitter, that already implies a very specific class composition of who is out there revolting. Uh, a lot of people in Iran don't even have a phone. A lot of people in Iran have never made a phone call. Uh, the people who are, have access to the Internet are maybe 20, 25 percent. That would be my guess. So if you say that the golden youth, the privileged, youthful uh, students of Tehran University are demanding the overthrow of the regime, this is, this is a social stratum that is essentially demanding 
more privileges for itself. These are people who believe in economic globalization. They're big on uh, free market. Uh, for example, this guy Musabi is demanding privatization of the state sector. A uh, typical IMF, International Monetary Fund, shock therapy uh, demand. He's demanding freedom on the Internet. Well, to the average peasant or poor worker, there's, there's no such thing as freedom on the Internet because they don't... They don't have the internet, and I think this this points to the to the limitation of what they're doing in in uh, Iran. It reminds me a little bit of the Cedars Revolution that they tried in Lebanon a little while ago, where you had the rich uh, Christian Maronite jet set driving up in Porsches and BMWs, if not Rolls Royces and Lamborghinis, and saying, "Oh, we're really hurting. We've got to get you know, we got to get Hezbollah out of." out of Lebanon. It's this, this kind of a situation. The support for Mousavi is largely in North Tehran, which is like saying, you know, Park Avenue or Beverly Hills or the, the Gold Coast of Chicago. In other words, a very rich neighborhood. So it's rich elitists who like Mousavi, and you can get enough of them to go out on the street and, uh, and, and drag some others with them, and the desperate housewives, because the desperate housewives are fascinated by the, by the wife of of Musabi, who's a, a lady with some kind of uh, academic background. She's an academic dean. And now, this is the problem, the very narrow base of support for, for the uh, U.S. British candidate Musabi. Um, normally, you have to have a public opinion poll. The, the classic way you do a color revolution is an oppressive regime has an election, and then you get your, your swarming adolescents, you get your rent-a-mob and dupe-a-mob of young people and rich elitists out in the streets, camping in the main square of Kiev, things like this, and they demand the overturning of the election, as they're doing now, based on the idea that vote fraud took place. Well, how can you prove vote fraud? In this case, there's absolutely no proof. There's, there's no suggestion of how you can prove vote fraud. They say, well, such and such a candidate came from this region, and he didn't win it. Well, you know, Al Gore lost Tennessee. Big deal. It's very easy for people to lose the area that they come from if the opponent is is popular. So the the vote fraud the, the vote fraud scenario suffers from the fact that they don't have a poll, and the polls that they do have show uh, Ahmadinejad shows the regime candidate winning by about two to one, so about two thirds of the votes for Ahmadinejad, and that's about what you have. So I think on the whole, this is not going to be very very. Successful, and I, I think the uh, the really sinister thing again is if Musabi got in, what would he do? Let's look at let's look at Musabi for a minute. This is the butcher of Beirut. This is one of the most hard line uh, Islamic fascists to use the neocon terms. If there's if anybody's Islamic fascist, it's him. But always you see the globalists, the CIA, MI six, cozying up to these butchers. Right, that, he represents the old line. He represents the old line, wealthy, corrupt that Ahmed Energid is fighting. I'm not saying Ahmed Energid's any angel, but this guy, you know, actually you can tell by his actions, he really believes he's doing the right thing. You're right, he's popular with the people, but the little CIA funded kids. The only way I see this working, and then I'm, gonna, but I want your take on this. So I'm interrupting Webster because I want to hear what you have to say on this. And, and this is what Paul Craig Roberts and others are saying, and I agree with them. The only real reason they went with this is maybe it's going to work to overthrow them. It destabilizes them, period, and discredits them in the world's eyes if Israel goes ahead and blows their uh, their nuke reactors to kingdom come that, oh, well, the regime deserved it. This is some type of uh, you know demonization campaign. Now, do you agree with that or am I wrong? Well, I think their their maximum option was to try to overthrow the regime and put in a puppet state. Uh, the, the other thing, let me talk in a minute about the idea of busting up Iran, because that's the real, real uh, uh, strategy. Mousavi, as you say, is this, this prime minister from the 1980s. And for me, the thing that, that sums it all up is, during the Iran-Iraq war, started by the U.S., of course, um, in, in 1980, 1981, you had um, the mullahs, who are not good people, to say the least, going around and getting children. They would take children, fairly young children, away from their parents and get them to go to the front, and they would give them a, a stick or some little weapon that was really no weapon at all, maybe a knife or some silly little thing, and then send them up against the machine guns of the Iraqi army. Uh, so it was like a children's crusade. Now, Musabi was the prime minister who presided over human wave attacks by young children who had been 
taken away from their parents by these uh, these mullahs. So this is what he represents. And he, of course, is a tool of this guy, Rafsanjani. Rafsanjani is one of the most corrupt people in the world. Rafsanjani could compete with, uh, with Zardari there in Pakistan in terms of corruption. Right? He's extreme... Uh, a corrupt manifestation of the old regime. So Rafsanjani, who is the oldest, most discredited, most corrupt representative of this entire uh, theocracy, that, that again, the theocracy was set up by Carter and Brzezinski uh, during the, uh, the Carter administration, right? They installed Khomeini. That's what they wanted. 